Kyle Whittington asks, does the Bible condone slavery? Uh, actually not. You know, I wrote my dissertation on the Jubilee laws, um, which are the laws of freedom. And so what you find out is that um, under Moses, um, under Moses, true slavery is outlawed for Israelites. That's the point of Leviticus 25. You can indenture a fellow Israelite if he owes you money. That means you can, you can make him work for you, okay, but you can't treat him like a slave. You, he, his civil rights are always intact. You know what, what that would look like. I don't know exactly in the ancient world, but he has civil rights as a free man, but yes, he, he can, you can, he can work for you to pay off his debt to a point only to the Jubilee year. And then every 50th year, all this is canceled and everybody's freed and goes home. So the worst thing that can happen to an Israelite is that you have to work for somebody to pay off your debt to them. You know, it's like a, like kind of like indentured servitude. Now, the other people surrounding the people of Israel could be enslaved, but only temporarily. And this is what you find, for example, in Deuteronomy 15. And there's a parallel passage earlier in Exodus 21. It talks about Hebrew slaves. Now, the, the thing that people mistake about that is they, they, they think that Hebrew is synonymous with Israelite. It's not. Abraham was a Hebrew. So all of Abraham's descendants are Hebrews as well. That includes the Ishmaelites, the Edomites, and a whole bunch of nations that we would regard as, as Semitic peoples, including most of the Arabs. Um, peoples that later settled in a ring around the nation of Israel, which is the logical place where they might get, uh, you know, what might purchase slaves. So in Deuteronomy 15, it allows the Israelites to buy slaves from the Hebrews, which would be the people surrounding them. But even there, it limits the term of slavery only for uh, six years. And in the seventh year, you have to release, even your foreigner has to be released. So it cannot be permanent unless they want it, unless they feel like their position in your household is better than <laughs> what they're liable to get anywhere else. And then if they submit to it, then, then their, their earlobe can be pierced and then they could become a permanent member of the household. And people say like, why would you ever want to be a slave for your whole life? Well, I'll tell you why. Uh, employment security and benefits, like the ancient world was brutal. Working for yourself was no fun. It was a good way to die. Mm. It was, as Jordan Peele said, not good. <laughs> okay? It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> okay, a lot. Of, you know, d day laboring was was not a very fun thing in the ancient world. If a day laborer was sick, he didn't eat that way that day because he didn't earn any money that that day. Oftentimes, it was just hand to mouth. And um, it, but but a slave, a slave was a member of the household. If he got sick, he was cared for. The master, if for no other reason than the fact that he had a huge investment in this uh, in this worker, you know, would 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 care for you and nurse you back to health and so on because, yeah, he had invested a lot of money in you and 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 needed your labor and so on. So, mm. slavery typically had benefits to it, and and you frequently find in the ancient world um, that that bonds of affection uh, arose between um, between uh, you know. Uh, masters and and their servants uh, in these uh, situations and and people would sell themselves into slavery um, in order to gain you know the security that it offered over being a, mm -hmm. a day laborer. I, that's hard for us to get our minds around, you know. Was in, it, in the modern was age, it chattel slavery, like is practiced in the new world, but. No, I mean, I think people get that what's, confused a what's, lot. What's so yeah, what's so perverse about slavery in the New World was it ended up as a as a race based thing, and and people have a hard time wrapping their mind around the fact that in the ancient world is like anybody could become a slave, you know, whether you're Caucasian or African or Semitic or whatever. That was like equal opportunity employer, you know. So anybody. And, and, you know, within Egypt, Egyptians themselves could be reduced to slavery if they committed a crime or something like that, you know, and so it was, it was, it was not racial at all uh, mm -hmm. in, in the ancient world. 
Um, so that's one thing you have to wrap your mind. And, and the other thing you got to wrap, wrap your mind around is, is that typically, uh, that, you know, there, there were expectations, you know, there were cultural expectations and, uh, yeah, legally, um, an owner might be able to be a real jerk. Um, but there were social norms that were typically upheld and most people did not want to be perceived as, uh, an evil person in the eyes of the rest of society. And so usually there was this effort to be humanitarian towards the people that worked for you. Yeah. This Jubilee year. Yeah. So that, does, so yeah, does, I mean, to, mean to, I was... to recap on the biblical thing. So Moses prohibits slavery for Israelites and even limits it for foreigners that the Israelites might buy no more than seven years, unless they, unless they mm-hmm. really like being part of your household. So that's the old, old Testament, you know, and if that's the old Testament, the freedom that we have in Christ, shouldn't that, you mm-hmm. know, bespeak more. So you have the passages in Ephesians, for example, where Paul says, uh, masters, um, you know, uh, do not be harsh with your slaves and slaves obey your masters. And that's a pragmatic thing because there were huge numbers of folks that were, um, were, uh, uh, dependent on their sustenance by their master. And in Paul can't just make some kind of blanket fiat declaration that everybody free your slaves because that could actually be non-humanitarian for a, no, a, a large number of people. There, that would put a lot of people out onto the out into the open marketplace where they may or may not have had skills to really make it as day laborers and the elderly, you know, elderly servants in the Greco-Roman world, it was regarded as, um, as a noble thing to keep the elderly on your, you know, roles as servants and allow them to do light labor into what we would regard their retirement years, you know, and at that point, you know, the, the household was not getting as much, uh, you know, economic value out of these elderly servants as they were actually producing. If you know what I mean, there's like more, more care was involved in keeping them alive Mm -hmm. than they were doing by like, you know, snapping peas in the kitchen. But that was regarded as a noble thing because there are these bonds, like they were Mm -hmm. part of the household and so on. So Paul doesn't do anything so rash as just say, well, everybody free your slaves, because that could lead to a lot of sick people, elderly people, weak people, et cetera, you know, out on the open marketplace and starving to death but he does apply uh the law of love you know and and the law of do unto others what you would have them do to you the golden rule um that applies in all situations and that can redeem even situations that are like legally or economically non-advantageous so if you're in a situation where this guy owns a bunch of slaves and it's really awkward if he tries to manumit them and what are they all going to do if they if they're suddenly not you know, part of his household, that's their source of sustenance, but he can treat them well and they can treat him well and we can, we can work past this, you know, and then when there's an opportunity to change the way that society works, we can, we can take that opportunity to, you know, make institutions that are less, you know, susceptible to being abused. But in the meantime, you know, we got to do something. And what is that? Why that's, that's to love each other and to treat each other well within imperfect, Mm. imperfect economic institutions. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.